All right, let me show you another really cool one. Hopefully, I'll show you a couple. I'm going to show you really why integration by parts was discovered. Er, discovered in men, and I can never tell. What haven't, which of our like main functions that we learned about way back in pre-calc and even in algebra 2, haven't we been able to take an antiderivative of yet? Well, one is, hopefully you'll agree, one is, excuse me, the natural log of x, right? We haven't done this guy yet. I have no idea how to do this, right? I don't know, I don't know the name of the function whose derivative is the natural log of x. There's no u substitution I can do. It's not one of the fantastic 15 or 13 or 17 or whatever the heck they are, right? But watch how useful integration by parts can be. All right, so you ready? We pick a u and we pick a dv. Now, this is always great because students are always asking, Roy, Ripley, why are you grabbing what you're grabbing and where and how? And just watch. I'm going to pick the natural log of x to be u and dx to be dv. Notice we have to account for the entire integrand. Notice, look at the rule. All right, here's the rule right here. The entire integrand has to be accounted for in that u and that dv. Now, why wouldn't I pick the natural log of x to be dv? Well, because when I go to find v, then I would take the antiderivative of the thing, you guessed it, I can't take the antiderivative of in the first place. So that doesn't make any sense. All right, so I pick dv as dx, right? And I'm gonna, now I'm off to the races. What's du? That's easy, that's one of the ones I've memorized and used a thousand times. One over x, right? And v, the antiderivative of one dx, is not just x, right? So this integral is equal to I'm using this equal sign to come down here. Don't yell at me for speaking bad math. All right, so here we go. It's uv, so x, ln x, minus the integral of v du, so minus the integral of x times 1 over x dx, and this is equal to x, ln x, minus the integral of, look at that, my x's cancel. Oh, that's lovely, which is just dx, and this is, hopefully you can see it, x ln x. Notice this uv is not being integral, integral, integrated. It just pops out, which makes it really nice, right? So you get x ln x minus the integral of dx. The integral of 1 dx is just x and then plus c. Isn't that awesome? That's incredible. Also, again, if we wanted to, if we didn't believe ourselves, we could check this by taking a derivative and we better get the integrand, which we would, by the way. How about this guy? What's another one? What's one that we haven't been able to do? How about one of our arc trigs or our inverse trigs? How about arctan? Now try this one on your own. Just put pencil to paper. I'm going to pause for just a sec, and then we'll do it together. Just try it. All right, find a u, find a dv, and see what happens. Okay, hopefully you tried it. Again, very much like the natural log of x, I'm going to let my dv be dx because I don't want it to be arctan, because then again, when I find v, I'm going to take the antiderivative of the thing I couldn't take the antiderivative of in the first place. So I'm going to let arctan be u, and then I know that du is 1 over 1 plus x squared, right? And I know that v is equal to x, so I know that this equals uv, which is x arctan of x, right? Minus the integral of x over 1 plus x squared. You see what I did there? v times du gives me this, dx. Now you may say, Ripley, wait a sec. You said that this was supposed to get easier and it looks harder. No, it isn't. Now on this one, I'm going to kind of hold the line on the whole uv thing. I'm not going to use a traditional u substitution. I'm going to use an a substitution here because I really don't want to confuse the u's that we use for integrating by parts with the u's that we use for, <laughs> that sounds hilarious, with the u's that we use with just standard issue substitution. So notice here that if I let a equal 1 plus x squared, you see how my, my skill set is just sort of opening up? I notice that this is really close to the derivative of the denominator. So I'm going to let a equal 1 plus x squared. I know that dA is going to equal 2x dx. I don't want a 2x dx. I want an x dx. So dA halves equals x dx, which is exactly what I want. Now, let me switch back to black. I love the changing color feature on this. So I know that this integral is going to be x inverse tan of x minus now 1 half the integral of what? Well, let's see. I pulled that 1 half out, and I'm going to end up with dA over a, right? 
Well, I'm not afraid of that. I've seen this before. Isn't this guy just x arctan? Notice I'm not taking the integral of the uv. That just gets spat out minus 1 half the natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus x squared. But since I know that that's always positive and greater than 0, I'm done. Isn't that awesome? I love it. That's so cool, right? It's very cool. All right. Now, those are the you, that's really the reason that we came up with integration by parts really in the first place. Now, well, I'm going to show you the keys to the kingdom. You're going to love me for this. Tonight, as you hit your knees and you thank, you count all of your blessings, count this as one of your blessings. This is called tabular integration. And really, all that it is, tabular integration, all it is is it's a shortcut way of doing parts, but it only works for certain types of integrals. Let's go back to our integral of x squared sine of x, the one that we started with. Now, the way that tabular integration works is, if you have part of your integrand, which is cyclical, and by that I mean if I take enough derivatives or integrals, I will get back very close to, uh, to what I started with. In other words, if I take enough antiderivatives of sine, then I'm going to get back to sine. At least I'll be off by a coefficient, right? If I take enough derivatives of another part, it's got to go to zero. So notice for part of the integrand, take derivatives until zero, all right, and then the other part has to be cyclical. Otherwise, tabular doesn't work, cyclical. So watch how this works. I'm going to let u equal x squared, and then I'm going to let dv equal sine x. I'm going to take derivatives till I hit zero. So I'm going to do 2x, 2, and then zero. For every derivative I take, I'm going to take an antiderivative. So the antiderivative of sine is negative cos x. The antiderivative of negative cos is negative sine x. The antiderivative of negative sine x is cos x, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work in diagonals here, all right? So this guy maps to the next to the to the next column over, but one value down here and here. And what I get is I'm going to put a plus here, even though I'm not going to be adding. It's really multiplying times positive one, right? This one's going to be a minus, which really means multiplying times negative one, and then plus here as well. So what I end up with is this integral is going to end up being x squared times negative cos x times positive one, which is negative x squared cos x. The next one's going to be 2x times negative sine x times negative one, which is going to be plus plus 2x sine x. And then our last one's going to be plus, because the 2 times cos times positive 1 is going to give me plus 2 cos x. And then, of course, plus c, because it's an indefinite integral. And let's see if we're right. Let's see. Looky, looky, looky. Negative x squared cos x plus 2x sine x plus 2 cos x plus c. And show enough, negative x squared cos x plus 2x sine x plus 2 cos x plus c. Isn't that awesome? Let me give you another example real quick. How about the integral of, uh, let, me, let me scooch over, because tabular takes a little bit of work. All right, let's do um, let's do the integral of 3x to the third, so 3x cubed, e to the negative 2x dx. Now, you got to be real careful here. It's really easy in this section to know that you have to use parts. But remember, at the end of chapter 5, I'm going to throw a bunch of integrals at you, and you're going to have to figure out which tool to use. That's the tricky part. So when I look at this, I want to make sure that no part of the integrand is a derivative of another part and that I can access it. You may say, wait a sec, if I let u equal x cubed, then du equals uh, 3x squared, which, it, yeah, but look, then your du is an exponent. Remember, your du is the thickness or the width of an interval. It's got to be out here, right? Remember, this dx is how wide the interval was when we, when we first developed integrals in the first place. So here we go. You ready? I'm going to let u equal 3x cubed, and I'm going to let dv equal e to the negative 2x. Now, why am I doing this? Because if I take enough derivatives of 3x cubed, it's going to 0. And if I take enough, a bunch of antiderivatives of this, I'll get values back that look very much like what I started with. It's just going to be off by a coefficient. So you ready? Take some derivatives. 9x squared, 18x, 18, 18, and 0. That's it. 8. Good God, Ridley. Okay, so let me make sure I got this right. When there's nobody here checking me, I sometimes have a tendency to do stupid things. Cool. For every derivative I took, I take an antiderivative. 
So let's see, e to the, yeah, using a quick little antiderivative with a substitution if I wanted to stick in negative 2x, what would that give me? It'd give me e to the negative 2x over negative 2. The next one would be e to the negative 2x over positive 4, right? Because that negative 2 is going to divide. e to the negative 2x divided by negative 8. And then last but not least, let's make sure 1, 2, 3. I need another one, don't I? e to the negative 2x divided by positive 16. If you don't believe yourself, take derivatives of these guys. Remember, you can always check your antiderivatives. The, the derivative of e to the negative 2x is negative 2 e to the negative 2x. This 16 is along for the ride, and this is what I get. And all I got to do here, remember, that's going to be positive 1, a negative 1, a positive 1, and a negative 1. So all I got to do is marry this stuff up. The integral of this guy is going to end up being, now look, see what I got? I'm going to end up with 3x cubed times e to the negative 2x, and then I've got a negative 2, so let's just go negative, and then I'll stick my 2 underneath so we can see it. My next one's going to be minus, because of that negative, 9x squared e to the negative 2x all over 4. My next one going to be minus, because i got a minus here, and a plus here, right? This is going to be minus 18x e to the negative 2x all over 8, right? And my next one's going to be minus 18e to the negative 2x over 16 plus c. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to want to reduce stuff. You might even get fancy and say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to factor out an e to the negative 2x. You can do that. You can reduce 18 eighths into what, 9 fourths, and this guy turns into 9 eighths, right? Do those things. Make it as clean and pretty as possible. But really, just like I always said, the actual calculus that needed to be done is now officially done. Now, I want you to notice something. Had we not used tabular integration on this, we would have had to use integration by parts not once. We'd have to use it once, twice, three, four times. Woof. Right? Because that's how many times I would have had to take a derivative of this thing to get it to go to zero. So when you speak of Ripley, by God, you better speak highly. Otherwise, have a fantastic day. I'll see you in class tomorrow and we'll do some integration by parts.